Okay, welcome back to another tailgate talk. Um, today we're joined by Brandon Nicholas, Adventure Archaeology. Um, so Brandon, thank you for joining us today. Um, I know you're uh, a Garrett influencer. Um, you like to do bottle digging, you like to do metal detecting. Um, maybe take a few moments to tell us how you got into it, um, what some of the cool stuff that you found over the years, and um, you know, just a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. I am a second generation Garrett swinger. So my dad was swinging Garrett metal detectors back in the early 1980s. So I grew up around it and we actually cut our teeth primarily in old parks, curb strips, stuff like that in the beginning days and did really well in central Alabama doing that. Of course, we weren't, you know, scoring stuff that was from the 1700s or the 1800s. Oh, yeah. We were primarily, <laughs> you know, we were primarily in that 100-year-old bracket, but that's yeah. okay. Silver, silver, right? That, that's right. That's and right. so uh, we've done really well at a couple of places, like a couple of old apartment complexes close to the University of Alabama. So there was okay. a lot of college students that came in and out through the years. Yeah. And uh, while we were there, we were finding just silver coin after silver coin. And we actually, probably one of my favorite things I ever found, and it sounds crazy because it's just a silver ring, but it's a huge wide band ring that has a giant ruby on it. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. And it wasn't but about 50 steps from where I pulled my first Walking Liberty. Oh, so awesome. It, it yeah, was so it's it. kind of a memorial for you to understand, to know that. That's a story there, and then probably a student lost it there at the... Yeah, it was it was collapsed completely flat, apparently oh. where somebody had drove over it with a lawnmower or something somewhere in time. However, we were able to take it to a jeweler, have it straightened back out, and just so happened it was my wife's size. Oh, <laughs> so she wears that's it. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. How did you get into the bottle digging? Oh, well, there again, I'm second generation. My dad, uh, once upon a time, was deer hunting in a pine thicket in Alabama. He okay. was walking along and he stood on something and the pine straw was on glass and it made a squeaky sound. And he said, what is that? And he kicked it back with his foot. And whenever he did, he exposed two 1880s whiskey bottles. Wow. And that started, cool. I guess, two generations of bottle diggers, and I'm trying to make it a third with my daughter. That's cool. Yeah, so I've seen some of the videos where you include her and your, and your wife down in the creeks and stuff like that. So, What are, what are the, uh, your, your favorite memories of uh, bottle digging with, with your friends and your family and stuff like that? Oh, man. There, there's so many that it's, it's pretty crazy. When you get to making videos like we do, it's uh it's something that we do every week so you know we don't right. just turn it off and do it one time right. a year we're, we're constantly out and about but it's always a good day when we have giant group digs you know okay. you got more personalities you have more camaraderie you have a lot of stuff going on and when we have those giant digs obviously the more dirt you move the more chance you have of finding something right. pretty cool right same thing with metal detecting well exactly. guys you got swinging the better chance you got of finding something good that's right and so we've had a couple of big group digs through the years, but I think 2017 was a real standout year. We had a giant dig. It was in early March. Okay. And we pulled out some really rare Hutchinson style bottles from the Birmingham area. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that bottle, it's made between about 1875-ish, right around there to around 1913. Okay. So you may think, well, that's not super old. However, the Americana side of it makes those bottles incredibly collective. And that's actually the first bottle that Coca-Cola and Pepsi use. So really? oh, yeah, that was cool. it's a first generation Coke or Pepsi bottle. So people relate to it, the collectors go wild over it, over it and some of those bottles are worth thousands of dollars when you find them, which is pretty cool. What's well, one of the most valuable bottles you've ever found? Well, I have found probably the the most valuable I found is going to be whiskey related. Whiskey. Okay. So uh, I, I found a couple of really nice dispensary flasks. Oh, uh, one awesome. was from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. One of them was from Anniston, Alabama. And it's really cool when you dig into the history on them because they were saloons. You know, it was the. Oh, you know, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, we may be closer to the east, but it was the Wild West, if you will, right. with the saloon world. And it's uh, it's pretty crazy because you get to digging into the history of it, just like with metal detecting, and you look back and think, man, how in the world, you know, did this thing survive, you know, 120, 130 years in yeah. the ground? And well, we're, that's cool, because research is always the, the most part, fun part of doing this stuff, is research and figuring out what it is, where it came from, how it got there. I mean, that that's how a lot of metal detectors, you know, they do the same thing when they're looking for a spot to go detect. So. Absolutely, and it's it's just one of those things where it's, it's addictive. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, so you have any future plans of like big digs that y'all got set up for the future? Or? We're, we're working currently right now with the landowner and we have permission to bring in an excavator. So we're going to be oh. we're going to be renting an excavator for a few days 
and uh, putting a giant hole, you know, the size of a house in, right. hopefully to uncover some really cool relics. That's the other thing about what we do is we run across relics. Yeah. Lots of skeleton keys, you know, all that kind of stuff is thrown away with time and right. we come up with it. But that on the bottle digging side, that's probably the thing that we're looking forward to the most right now is that big dig that'll be coming up. We have okay. to do it before the kudzu grows back. This place is covered with kudzu, so we have to get in there before the kudzu grows over. Yeah. Uh, as far as metal detecting events go, we do have a couple events planned. Of course, we're going to be at the Garrett Memorial Hunt yeah. in April. And then we're planning on attending the uh, Treasure Fest, I think it may be six in Arkansas. Yeah, Kadoha. Yeah, it's either five or six. I can't remember what number it is. That'll be in the fall of this year, I think. Yeah, in yeah. October. Yeah. So we're, we're planning on being there. I'm sure there's a couple more sprinkled in there. I've been invited to rush the Rockies in Colorado. Okay. Yeah. And I think Detecting the Heartland has one as well. I don't know how many will be able to attend to those, but we would love to get up there and do it if we can. Cool. Well, I um, appreciate you taking the time to tell us a little bit about yourself and how, how you got into this stuff. And um, maybe we can get together sometime and go do Let's some do bottle it. digging because I, I I love getting into the pits and stuff like that. I've done a little bit of dump site hunts and stuff like that, and to me it's just exciting because you never know what's going to come out. Absolutely, K, KG said he wants to go too. So y'all just bring all of the the Garrett crew with you, and let's just go put a big hole in the ground so we come up with. Awesome, that sounds like a plan. Sounds good, Miguel. Thanks. Well, all right. Well, thank you for joining us for another tailgate talk, and we'll see you on the next one.